Hello again, this is Matt, and uh, yesterday I posted how I used Mathematica to make uh, this blog post here, which is uh, showing all about centrifugal force and Coriolis force forces in a sort of rotating reference frame. So my idea is to, um, is to uh, when I th have an idea for a blog post, I'll think about it for a while, but not actually do any coding. Then start recording and go into Mathematica and see how it goes. So my idea for my next post is all about the Fresnel lens, and this is the Wikipedia article for it, which I'm glad I looked at before uh, just going ahead because I wasn't sure if this was a how to uh, if this was a French name and it was indeed Fresnel. If I should, I was thinking Fresnel in my head. But anyway, it's a cool type of lens shown here in a lighthouse and uh, what it is is um, a way to make a magnifying lens thin so uh, this diagram is pretty good so uh, the Snell's law says that uh, the uh, light will, ray will be reflected at the boundary between the air and the glass and that uh, the amount of um, the amount that the the light ray bends depends on the angle of the surface of the glass, and not at all on the thickness of the glass. So the shape on the left has the same angles, except for these discontinuities, as the shape on the right. So it will bend the light in the same way. So I wanted to kind of make a animation that goes between these two and shows that the light rays are bent just by the same amount. Okay, so Mathematica and a new notebook here. Boost up the zoom a little bit and make it full screen, I guess. So, what to do? Well, I was thinking that the best... Well, when a simple lens would just be the arc of a bigger circle. So in Mathematica, I think we can um, use the circle function to define, yeah, an arc. So then it goes like this. We will make a, if we make the center of it uh, minus, uh, minus a, zero, the radius uh, a and this pi by three and minus pi by three. So I don't I don't really know what, how those angles are defined. Like if they're above the x-axis or below the x-axis or what. So what we'll do is just manipulate this. Looks like I already have a somewhere. Okay, and just manipulate A between 1 and 10 and see what this looks like. Okay, so changing A is not... oh yeah, yeah okay. So pipe... we can change this theta here to get the shape uh, to vary the shape instead of a. So a is kind of scale invariant from 0 up to pi by 3 because I think pi by 3 is too much of a curve. Curve, And I just make a1. Okay, yeah, so I want to pick a good value to make a good lens. So maybe uh, something like this. So that's probably about um, two thirds, so like two pi by nine. So if we pick uh, two pi by nine, and we'll just make this fixed for the rest of it. So we'll just write theta equals that. And uh, that means, so we have a uh, shape for a lens here. Now, 
uh, we can we should fill in the back of the lens so that it goes from okay so we have to do some geometry in our heads here well the maximum it would be is uh, uh, little, like, cos uh, wait it's a bit confusing 1 minus sine theta cos theta uh, I would probably do this on paper just to make sure that I was doing it right because I'm definitely not okay so look at the y coordinate right and So the center is at minus one, uh, okay, minus one plus cos theta, cool. And the other, it's a bit small actually to see where points are, but I've managed to figure out that the line on the back of the lens goes between those. Yeah, cool, figured it out. And might give it a bit more extra thickness. So if A, A is extra thickness amount, then I want to draw the line of offset by A. And then that means I want to draw, connect it back up to the lens like properly. So, um, Without the A, polygon. Let's change it back to line, and then without the A, uh, this needs to. I have to take the A out of here for some reason. Okay, cool. So that's this is the my idea for the shape of the lens. Now the next thing, I want to have light rays coming in from the left and then focusing to the right. So um, let's start drawing those. Uh, a light ray is a line. And I want to vary this from... Uh, the, I want to vary the y coordinates. So sine theta is the minimum and minus sine theta is the minimum, sine theta is the maximum and uh, how many uh, light rays do I want? Sine I want to have um, if I wanted to have 10 I put 5 here so the line has to go from a 0 y and now we're just up to one Y just to make sure it's doing the right thing. Okay, it's a mistake somewhere. Okay. Uh, I forgot to put a comma somewhere. Here. Cool, cool. Oh yeah, it has to be minus one up to zero. Yeah, so that with ten, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ten of the, yeah, okay. So, uh, the light rays come in from the left, and then they need to bend when they get to here. And I don't want ones which are actually at the very tip. So I'm going to make a Y vary from 90%. So that looks quite cool. Make sure use a different color for now, for the light rays. Blue. Okay. Now, the x coordinate, the maximum x coordinate here shouldn't be zero, but it should be, um, uh, right, so, what's the f equation of this circle? We have to have x plus 1 squared plus
plus y squared equals 1. That's the equation of this circle, or the circle that that's an arc of. So if we have y, uh, we can find out what x ought to be. So solve for x. OK, so it's going to be the bigger one here. So it goes up to here. Sweet. And now, also, I can uh, work out how much it should be reflected. So that's Snell's law. Snell's law is um, n1 times sine theta 1 is n2 times sine theta 2. So the, the angle of incidence is the angle off of the normal. And, uh, and then the angle of outsidence is the other angle on the other side. And n1 over n2 is therefore some uh, property of the glass and air that depends, that determines how um, much to bend the light. So call n1 over n2 alpha. And start with alpha equals 1, so that means that they're the same. So that there's no bending. Now, for each line, I'm going to try and work out what theta 1 is. So I do this. Now theta 1 equals... Uh, so to work out the angle that y... Um, the angle to the center of the circle that this is part of, which is here, we'll have to use arc tan, I think. Arc tan xy. Uh, and x is this. Theta 1 equals that, right? I might also put in x here, say x equals that, just to make it a bit more compact, x equals that, x equals that. So it's not changed anything yet. But then also put in a text saying what, at x, y, saying what we think theta 1 is, just to make sure it looks kind of normal. Yeah, okay, that looks about right. See, it's positive up here. Uh, does it look right? Well, if, uh, let's do this. Yeah, I don't know. It seems to go negative below there. I suppose that might be correct modulo 2 pi. But anyway, say if we had the right value for theta 1, then theta 2 would equal um, uh, the inverse sine of theta 1 times alpha. So that is, uh, alpha is 1 at the moment, so I'll just give theta 1 back, roughly. And then that angle it determines how much, hmm. So the I guess we should work at the deflection angle, which is going to be... Um, let's see, uh, well, maybe I should have written down, uh, maybe, I think what I'll do is I'll pause the recording and then come back once I've done a little s diagram on paper just to convince myself about what to do next, so be right back.
Hello again. Okay, I was just thinking about it a bit and cleared up in my head, I think. So, instead of running y between certain values, I think it makes the math a bit easier to instead uh, change the angle from the center up. So if we're calling that phi, then its minimum and maximum should just be uh, between theta and negative and positive theta. And um, uh, yeah, so like this. And now I want the variables to be x, y, and then what we'll call phi 2, which is going to be the reflect what happens to phi what happens to the angle, like, if it's, if it's reflected, uh, refracted, I mean. And so x is still that, but now we need to say y equals sine phi. x is that. And we're not doing this anymore. Phi t has to be um, the inverse sine of alpha times um uh, uh times sine of phi which is y and right now the deflection we should do d phi is the difference in phi t now we have an I guess we could do another line which goes from x, y to um, uh, x, y plus something in the direction d phi. So if d phi is 0, then uh, we want this to have a 0 y coordinate because this, this is the deflection. So something like this, I think, is uh, almost right. And by running it, we can see in what way it's wrong. So that it shouldn't have been at all because alpha is 1. What happens if we increase alpha? Yeah. Then it starts bending them in. So if we have uh, this amount we draw it a bit further, yeah. So I might want to start adding a plot range onto this. Well, of course, it's not a very nice lens because it doesn't focus at all to the same point. Ah. Okay. Uh, I don't know what shape it needs to be to always focus it to the same point. Alright, so having found out that um, it doesn't focus it to a point, I uh, just looked up on Wikipedia here a uh, lens article and found that there's a thing called spherical aberration uh, where um, because a sphere is the easiest uh, or a circle, circular arc is an easy, an easy thing to grind, apparently, out of a piece of glass. Um, that's often made, and it has a problem that it doesn't focus it into a point, which is what we just found. Now, one way we could cheat and just say, okay, make the focus point here, and um, draw all the lines going to that point, which it might do in the end. But I, I guess it's kind of interesting that we find this problem out for ourselves. What happens if we make... Yeah, okay. And if... Yeah. If you can't make it too high, otherwise it doesn't make sense as a alpha value. Um, okay. So I think we'll just define the focus point. Uh, to be something and just draw up to that point. So um, we get rid of this 
and this. We'll see what the focus point is, F. Try one zero since that's a nice number, nice coordinate. And do this. Um, X plus Y. Let's go F, up to F. That's up to the focus. Okay, so it's obviously cheating now, but I know the whole point of making this into a circle was so that the mass would be easier, so we could work out that earlier, but hey, we discovered what spherical aberration is, and ain't that interesting. Uh, okay, now to make it into a Fresnel lens, hey? So, I think to do that we should... Um, Possibly, so we'll have to split the lens into chunks, and uh, <clears throat> to draw a chunk of it will be a bit harder. But so maybe let's, uh, yeah, let's write. Oh, actually, I've got an idea. Let's go for this. So obviously, this stuff here has to be written into a split up into all the chunks, right? So uh, we're varying y coordinate from its uh, minimum to its maximum. And how many chunks do we want? Uh, well, if we do uh, a Sine theta over five. That might work nicely. There's six, so it's one more than a number of rays. Um, now, let's try and recreate it. What we have here, but just with um, chunk by chunk. So the first part is to draw how much of the arc we want. Okay, again, actually, let's do it by phi instead of y. Uh, minus theta to positive theta, theta over 6. Now, this is the center, it's the same, the radius is the same, but the range is different. We want to do it from uh, phi uh, to phi plus theta over 6. Okay, let's have a look at that. Well, okay. Uh, argument line. Bit confusing. Oh yeah, whoops. I forgot to do this again. Okay, cool. So this is drawing this arc in little pieces now. And now we don't need to do it. Yeah, okay. There we go. It's theta minus theta over 6. All these little pieces. Now, the, l the line part is different. So the top of it is 5 plus theta over 6. Uh, oh, whoops. Uh, the x, I... yeah, yeah, that's right. Here, 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 and here. Now this is just phi. This is just phi. Just see what I'm trying to do here. See if that worked. Whoa! <laughs> it's something cool at least. Um, right, let's look at this in more detail. I'll try and do something quickly and then hope it works and then it doesn't work and then look and see why it didn't work. Um, so this is meant to be the, uh, the top. The top. Minus a
Okay, right. Um, so, um, the thickness part, this shouldn't be dependent. The y, the x part, shouldn't be dependent on the phi. And same here. Yes. And um, let's separate these a bit more for now so we can see if it's doing the right thing. And um, the difference between this and this uh, x plus phi plus theta over 6. Why? Confusing. Let me just think. X. Y coordinate here. Going to the wrong y coordinate here. Uh, um. Oh, whoops. Okay, I think this here and take this away from here. No, <laughs> that is wrong. This is slow progress, this is a bit of a stumbling block. Um. Oh, there's a minus here. And no minus here. Uh. Let's try. So it should be no minuses. Just drawing one, two, three. Man, okay, this is confusing. Is anything? One, two, three, four. This is on the lens, and this is moved to the left by A. This is, uh, no, um, this is down below, and this is back on the lens. Okay, back on the lens. Okay. So there, I think that's it right now. Turn these all back to pi by 6. So we've done the, we've drawn it in sections now. Now, let's see. How many sections? Fewer? Let's try. Um, let's add another one in here, n equals 4, and change all the 6s to n's. Uh, 
Okay, that looks a bit better. And now, let's put the whole thing in a manipulate. And we'll have this uh, other a parameter which is D. And that's how much we're pushing in the lens to make a Fresnel lens. Zero to one. So that will be um, changing the points on the lens. Right, so I want to translate, which means, you know, or transpose. No, translate, right? Uh, the area of the arc by uh, minus d0. Let's see how that looks to start with. Okay, so they are being moved in. So the but the maximum I can do it is the minimum of the sine phi and sine phi plus theta over n. So this has to be maximum of d and then minimum of what I just said sine phi sine phi plus theta over n Uh, maximum or minimum, and also this has to be. Oh, sorry, cos. So, yeah, uh, I have max. This isn't right. Um, minus. Well, this is the right shape on the left. So the problem is that I uh, yeah, this has to be uh, minus. I need to do minus the x. This is confusing. Okay, minus cos of theta over cos of theta. Yeah, hey, they all fall into place. Now, the lines as well. Um, so that's this is actually quite a complicated expression, so let's call it D D D block um D D D D equals that and now we have all this stuff. Don't need these brackets anymore. The line now goes up to um, uh, so this is on this has to go to minus dd that one's fine, that one's fine, and this one has to be minus dd oh, on the x coordinate, not the y coordinate so, here we are and the whole thing slides back and, well, one problem is still the light rays need to change, don't they? And uh, again, they uh, change depending on, they'll change what happens to the focal point and there'll be aberration. So um, is there any way to not have that? Um, I'm not sure. I quite like how they look like they fall down and slot into place. Well, maybe... Maybe let's ignore the aberration. Or... Yeah, in the end I might make it... 
accurate again. Accurate um, bending and then just show what happens. Because the important thing is really for this lens that it's bending the light inwards. Um, okay, so let's change the light rays to be consistent. So the light rays are all here. Um, so the oh yeah, it needs to know what segment it's on, doesn't it? <laughs> oh man, this is complicated. Well, if we make if we do it a bit more cleverly, same number. We know it's there, right in the middle of. Uh, a seg each light ray is in the middle of a segment now, so we can work out very easily which segment it's in. And using this, this is a useful expression for us again. So we want to work out D, D. And I miss out, I forgot to copy a bracket. Now phi. Uh, it's going between. Okay, let me just think about this. Yeah, I can work out. I want to work out phi is a. How much of a fraction is it of theta? And then put it in. So phi two is equal to okay uh, phi over theta floored times theta I think I mean I'm freestyling and uh, then dd so x y goes up to there. So x is now minus dd. Let's see. Well, that's not right. <laughs> um, yeah. So if we just do yes, okay. Is it seal ceiling instead? Um, of theta, okay, like this. That times phi. That times um, divided by theta. One over this. Let's see. No. Okay. Um, so if we had this going from like the same as above, and phi two equals phi. Yeah. Uh, okay, I see what the problem is. Uh, let's see. Hmm. Um, okay. Let's do this at minus theta over n. Phi equals theta over n plus equals this. Ah, uh, not that's not right. 
Okay. Yeah, that's it. Oh, no, that's not it. <laughs> I didn't think it would be it. Okay. Um, and then... Five, DD is... Minimum of D... If I put this in here, then this might work. Yeah, that's it. Okay, cool. So that's working. And uh, so we can, we have a thing which compresses it and f keeps the focus. Now the only, the other thing is that the focus would be lost if we did this because it would actually be like this All right and I think that um, we would have to do to make it go beyond there we would do uh, to make it go beyond the focus, we could have something like this, see. Okay. Just halfway further. Okay, so, I mean, this is kind of maybe good enough almost t for me to turn into a GIF. So I had a, it wasn't quite as smooth as my first making of video, I had a couple stumbling blocks figured out about aberration and I was stuck on something for quite a while. But anyway, that gives you a bit of like the process behind making these animations. There's a fair amount of tricky maths and it makes it a bit harder to do when I'm trying to sort of talk through it and um, uh, I don't want to do stuff on paper so much. But anyway, hope you enjoyed and until next time, goodbye!